and when to invoke Garrity. Uh, Garrity uh, should be invoked anytime we have to produce a, uh, information for a department. Uh, that would include the police reports, your use of force forms, any interviews that are done uh, both officially and even unofficially, like an officer wants to ask you, a command officer wants to ask you questions regarding the incident, you should ask for a union rep at that point in time. Make sure that you invoke your right to remain silent uh, and wait until you're ordered as a condition of employment under a threat of discipline. The compulsion aspect of Garrity is the, the actual order itself. The order is not enough. You do need uh, the threat of discipline. Both components have to be present in order for the prohibition to kick in. The prohibition is the department's ability to be able to use it internally, but the inability to actually be able to use the statement as a basis of criminal charges. The Fifth Amendment, that's where the actual right uh, of Garrity emanates. It's uh, found within the body of the Fifth Amendment. It's been interpreted to flow from the phrase there that says, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against yourself. That's the so-called right to remain silent. The whole uh, backdrop to the, the Fifth Amendment in this case is that the government should be able to produce uh, witnesses and evidence to, with, to, to be able to find you guilty of a crime without using your statement as the basis of the charges. It's to encourage independent investigations and make sure that guilty parties are punished based upon real evidence, not necessarily their own statements. So, again, when it comes to uh, the Fifth Amendment, it flows from the Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, originally, the Fifth Amendment only applied to the federal government after the Civil War, the passage of the Fourteenth Amendment. It was applied to the states. The Bill of Rights uh, then applied to all citizens of the United States through the Fourteenth Amendment. And that's where we get your Fifth Amendment protection as it applies in this case. Uh, the Fifth Amendment privilege includes the right to remain silent as well as immunity from use in criminal proceedings. Again, this is a protection that allows for government or a court to gather information, compelling it from an individual, but not having that information be used against the individual as a basis of criminal charges. This applies across the board to all aspects of information gathering from the government uh, up by an individual, which so that includes your police reports, your use of force forms, uh, investigations, official uh, documents you have to fill out, any type of information that's provided regarding an incident. You can invoke your right to remain silent, and the department can order you as a condition of employment under a threat of discipline to provide that information. Again, the Fifth Amendment does not have to be invoked in an official court proceeding. It can be invoked in these administrative processes and investigations within the department. The Fifth Amendment is not self-executing, meaning that you have to make known your intent not to provide a statement. Uh, simply providing a statement and not saying that you have any objection to it, that it's not voluntary, the court will deem the, the statement to be voluntary and the Fifth Amendment not to attach. So you can be asked or ordered to provide a statement. If you haven't made known that you have any objection to that, that statement is not protected. Again, the cases in which the U.S. Supreme Court has addressed this issue, both in Manus and Molina, uh, make very clear that the Fifth Amendment is not self-executing. The POAM, back in, I think, 2001, uh, took a Livingston County case uh, regarding the Garrity uh, statement being written into a police report and the officer being disciplined as a result of that to federal court. At that point in time, Livingston County and POAM came up with an agreement that was signed off on by the chief uh, judge in the federal uh, district court at the time, uh, Judge Zadkoff. And in there, it specifically states that the privilege is not self-executing. The person claiming the privilege must affirmatively assert it. The compromise, of course, was the Garrity form that we use or we suggest individuals use any time that there's an order and a threat of discipline attached to an incident. Um, it is proper if you have to write the Garrity um, 
protection right in your police report. There's nothing wrong with that. This was just a compromise that the POAM and Livingston County came up with. It is good law. And again, though, it, it indicates that you cannot uh, expect that the protection will just automatically attach. It's not self-executing. There's no retroactive uh, application to the Fifth Amendment. Once you've given a statement, you can't go back and protect it. The Garrity right, again, is nothing more than the protection of the statement uh, from being used as a basis of criminal charges uh, when an officer is compelled under a threat of discipline. And again, you have to have both the order and a threat of discipline. The officer, uh, after invoking his right to remain silent, gets the order under a threat of discipline. That statement is then protected and can't be used as the basis of criminal charges. In the case of Garrity v. New Jersey, um, the court made very clear that the police officers, just because of their status as public officials or police officers, do not lose their constitutional protections. Since Garrity came out in 1967, uh, a number of cases has address, have addressed uh, ancillary issues as it relates to the Fifth Amendment. In Spivak v. Klein, you had an issue where uh, it was extended to include statements that a defense counsel had made or an attorney had made to the state bar in uh, New York during the course of an official investigation regarding his license. It was being conducted by the state of New York and as such he had a right to remain silent and the information could not be used as the basis of criminal charges. So we get to Broderick, uh, Gardner v. Broderick. That's a case where an officer is called before a grand jury by a prosecutor in which he wanted to uh, invoke his right to remain silent not testify he was ordered to give up his right to remain silent or he'd be punished. The court said that the individual officer had the right to remain silent. He could not be punished simply for invoking his constitutional rights. Now, in Gardner v. Broderick, it makes very clear, though, that it is an option for the prosecuting attorney or the courts to issue an order for the individual to provide a statement. But in that case, the individual had invoked, would be able to invoke his right to remain silent. The court would order it as a uh, to give up that right, it would be use immunity would then attach, meaning that his statement would not be able to be used against him, but it would be able to be used against others. Again, it's a protection that his statement is not going to be used as a basis of criminal charges. And as we get to the sanitation cases, both one and two, the court makes very clear that the invocation of the right to remain silent is not grounds for discipline, and that you do have a right to do that as an employee even as a public employee, you still have a right to remain silent. You can evoke your right to remain silent. But you can be punished if the promise is given after invoking your right to remain silent, i.e., we will not use this in a criminal proceeding. We're only going to use it in an internal proceeding. Or if a court orders you to provide a statement and you refuse, you can be punished for that. But you can't be punished for just an invocation of your rights, and you, you cannot be ordered to give up the right to be able to invoke uh, your right to remain silent or any other constitutional right. When we get to Katzegard, Katzegard is a case in which uh, federal prosecutors have the ability to make agreements with the uh, defense counsel to uh, have the individual provide a statement but not have the actual statement used against the officer without going to court. In Michigan, you have to go to court. A court has to order it in state courts because the prosecutor doesn't have the authority to enter into that type of binding agreement. The Fifth Amendment protects against testimonial evidence, not physical evidence. And that comes from the U.S. Supreme Court case in Schoenberger uh, versus California. In that case, you have uh, a question of blood alcohol results and whether or not they're protected by the Fifth Amendment. The answer is no. And that would include any other type of testing, such as DNA, hair, uh, if fingerprints, those types of things. They're not guaranteed protected. It's only going to be when you provide a statement. Who controls the right? Uh, this really is a non-issue, in my opinion. The officer controls whether or not to invoke his right to remain silent. That's a personal right that the employer has absolutely no control over. But the employer has control over whether or not they're going to order the officer under a threat of discipline to provide a statement. So if the officer says, I'm going to remain silent, 
the department can say, fine, I'm not going to order you to provide me with a statement. Then go forward with their investigation and whatever they find, they can use against the officer in a subsequent internal or criminal case. If the department decides after the officer has invoked his right to remain silent that they want the officer to provide a statement as a condition of employment, they have the right to order you to provide one. And if you do not abide by that order, you can be subject to discipline. And as such, at that point in time, that statement will be protected and not be able to be used as the basis of criminal charges. But the employer will get all the information he needs to be able to evaluate uh, the situation as it relates to internal discipline or policy violations or even training in the future. Now, Michigan has an added element to the Garrity uh, process, which is MCL 15.391 at SEC, in that uh, it provides that any uh, statement provided by an officer, actually it says any information, so it's uh, broader than just a statement. It's any information that's provided by the officer that's been compelled is protected uh, from uh, use in the subsequent criminal proceeding. The statute uh, makes clear that the officer has the right to uh, has the right to uh, have a protection on the statement uh, if the officer uh, is ordered as a condition of employment to provide a statement the protection will attach the statement is not uh, subject to disclosure to the public it's a confidential communication to be held for internal purposes it can be obtained by uh, the officer. Uh, the prosecutor can get it with a search warrant, a subpoena, a court order. Uh, it's not supposed to be provided in any circumstance with absent written consent or the court order. The union officials can get it to review, and so can attorneys in civil cases as long as there's a court order attached to it. This does create a dilemma for the officer when it comes to criminal charges. Uh, if they want to charge a bad guy uh, in a let's say a carjacking or an assault case, uh, an R&O, and there's also something that the officer has invoked his right to remain silent regarding, i.e., a use of force in, in the complaint, or there's been a discharge of the weapon and someone has been shot or injured or killed. Uh, the officer may be put in a situation where he has to decide whether or not to release that document to the prosecutor to charge a surviving suspect or another suspect in the case or to have the protection of Garrity and, or the statute. And in this case, it, it is a problem. It's something that uh, comes up from time to time, and they'll just have to be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis with the officer in consultation with the union or his attorney uh, in the matter. If there's no direct order, the POAM does have a form which can be used. Uh, it's an assertion of the constitutional rights. Uh, the form is available on the POAM.net or can be obtained from your business agent or the on-call attorney. Basically, the form provides that the individual uh, will provide a statement if he's invoking his right to remain silent at this time, if he does receive an order specifically from the department, and if that violation of that order would result in a penalty, uh, i.e. some employment sanction, uh, that he will provide a full and truthful statement regarding the incident. If you do not have an order, no guarantee will attach. There's questions regarding, well, what if I'm just a witness to an incident? In Michigan, and really across the board, there really are no just witnesses when it relates to an incident involving officers. Michigan has a number of charges that can be issued against officers regarding uh, incidents that occur in the course of their duty, one being misconduct in office, which is a five-year common law felony. There's a willful neglect of duty, the false police reports. There's also conspiracy and other charges. And when you're a witness, when you consider yourself just a witness to the case, let's say that you have a, four officers at the scene, one fires his weapon, shoots and kills a suspect, the other three never, ish, never fire a weapon. Are the other three then free from concern? And the answer is no, because you never know how after the fact the review of that case is going to go. They may think the officers colluded in some way to provide a statement that benefited the officer, in which case you're looking at a conspiracy charge, or they may say the report that was filed was false, or that the officer should have taken some action and he didn't. So in all the, the incidents in which you have questions, you know, if it's a critical incident, something that could lead to discipline, 
or a criminal investigation, our advice would be for internal purposes to do it under Garrity. And then, of course, if there's a criminal case, you know, those would be consultations with a criminal attorney and whether or not to provide a statement. But internally, uh, our position is that there is no such thing as just a mere witness to one of these incidents. There's the Garrity form, which is available on POAM.net. Again, the union officials should have a copy of this with their files within the department, as well as your business agent. So if you ever have any questions or needs, contact the office. We can get you the form. It's also available, like I said, 24-7 on the POAM.net.